kitchen wall, hallway wall, right there, curve of the shower wall, toilet under that lamp, vanity in that corner. Friends! What's up, adventure friends? Good to see you! How's it going today? <sighs> going good up in here. Things are starting to get really interesting in the bus. Yeah. And specifically today, this has been a project we've been like just brainstorming and getting the juices flowing for a while. And We're framing out the bathroom <laughs> today. We're putting up the wall that's between the kitchen and the bathroom. We're putting up the wall that's going down the hallway. And we're putting up a very special wall that we haven't seen in a schoolie yet. Yep. It's actually going to be a curved wall that's going to make the shower a very interesting place to be. Yeah, like we're hoping that we don't have to use a curtain. We designed it so that it can be curtainless, so you can just walk in and the water stays contained in the space because I don't know about you, but both of us really don't like when you're in a shower, especially at like a hotel or an Airbnb or something, and like the shower curtain touches you and you're like, oh, who's touched that? <laughs> Curses me out. <laughs> so, we're gonna go for a curved wall and see what happens. Yeah, so you're gonna have to stay tuned for when we actually build out the actual shower stall and everything. But today it's all about setting up the space so that we've got the nice footprint set up for the bathroom so we can start building out other projects in there like the toilet area and the vanity. Yeah, the kind of interesting thing that we're bumping into now and specifically with the closets was as you start framing throughout the bus it's kind of like a domino effect you start you know thinking about okay what's this space gonna be like mm -hmm. and you're you're being in the space sitting in the space like acting like you're doing things in the space then you're like oh maybe that doesn't give us enough room to walk mm -hmm. through that walkway or I don't know all kinds of things are coming up so we've kind of had this like domino effect down the bus um, that's been really interesting and it's made us think and get creative with the space and how it flows so this is gonna be really fun. Deck screws. Three and a half inches. Three and a half inches. That will get us through the uh, two by four, through the nice floor, subfloor, and just a little poke into our foam. <laughs> just a little poke. Don't tell anyone about that though. Tag it in there, and then we'll throw the level on it one more time. Coming into good use, huh? Oh, yeah, we're gonna set the sled up here. I'm actually gonna set these down here so they don't fall out of the way. We're gonna have it unplugged and we're gonna check the depth of the sled versus the thickness of the floor that we're taking out because we don't want to go too, too deep. So, to do that, we're gonna put the saw on the sled, unplugged, of course, and then just pull that piece forward. And make sure that the blade is just long enough without cutting too much of the subfloor. Set it there and then check. And you come a little bit higher. There we go. That should just cut straight through there. Pretty good. This is what we're cutting right here. So there's a little bit of an overhang because that probably was cut on the squirrely table saw. So you can see here that we need to just drop that little bit of edge right there. So we lined it up with where our destination is and we lined it up with this square point here, which will end up making that floor uh, piece completely square. Aaron already took out the uh, screws that were toenailing that in. So now we're good to go. Because we can't clamp this, I'm basically gonna be just putting pressure on it to keep it from sliding around. It's pretty freaking like sticky, so I think it'll be just fine. So if you could stand on this side over here, and then I'll stand on this edge over here, and then uh, we'll just uh, roll it along that edge. As long as your foot's in the clamp zone, you're cool. Clamp zone. Ears on, eyes on. I don't even think 
think I even touched the paper on that one. Again. <laughs> Again, very nice. nice and let's yeah. see how this board fits in. Oh, perfect. And then this one here. Yeah. That's solid. Oh, but what about these? Oh, no, what about these? Oh. <laughs> All right, show me where my level's at. There. Right there. Actually, that's really good. Nice. Yep. Boom. Boom. You like that? Yep. Guys, this is bonkers. We are putting up like a legit wall in our school. We have cabinets, but now a freaking bathroom. <laughs> legit wall. That's right. Okay, so using the crag jig, we're gonna uh, tack in the bottom edge of this stud here into the, the bottom plate. So all the studs are gonna be uh, tacked in like this on the bottom plate, and then the top will extend the furring strips across so that they can extend straight across there, and then that'll also provide some vertical support for the walls and everything. This is pretty cool. <laughs> How's your level look? Perfecto. Perfecto. And then let's look at this way also. So we'll tilt it that way. You good? Yep. Yep. <laughs> the first one is up. <laughs> Whoa! Crazy! The first one's up! Level. Level, level, level. We check to see if it's level in a couple spots. We check to see if it's level front to back of the bus. It's kind of level. And then we check to see if it's kind of level this way also. Typically you go for 16 inch on centers for studs, but this is not a typical situation. And we've got some weird spacing here. So these two are a little bit close, but I'd rather go close than they're not, really. Well, this is a main hallway, so if we bump into this wall, <gasps> I have the hiccups. You want to make sure <laughs> that uh, the wall doesn't fall over and all your tiles fall off your wall. All right, you good? Nope. Now I'm good. Look at that. Look at it! Whoop. Look at it! The walls get built in this place. How crazy is that? Cool, super crazy. We'll probably be putting another piece right here. And you're pushing per. Yeah. Before we tag this side in. This is gonna go approximately sure. right here to figure out where this side needs to go. Okay. Perfect. Alright, you good? Yep. Still good. Nice. Or well, if we're going down so the hall together, you know to go that side. Short and I come to this side. <laughs> <laughs> cool! This is exactly how I imagined it with the tape lines. Yep. Like when we were taping the floor out, this is like the exact size I imagined. 
Weird. And we still have plenty of room to make the corner with a uh, washing machine. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting low like this because it's gonna countersink uh -huh. and it's gonna rise up a little bit. So let's see what this, hopefully this doesn't make it through the ceiling. I think we'll probably be safe there. Fingers crossed. Let me take a peek on this side. Oh. All right, so it's through there. I don't see it through the top. <laughs> and we've got another maybe half inch to go. We still go through our roof. Nope, didn't even poke through the top. Oh. All Perfect. Right. Win. So this time, let's go through the front here. I say front, <laughs> through the spot I'm looking at. And let's side it straight past that beam. So let's come down a little bit. And... Purchase point. Purchase point. And then let's go straight through there. There we go. It's like you're Craig jigging. It's, yeah, it's... It's kind of like I'm Craig jigging. <laughs> Definitely jigging. Jigging jiggy with it. All right, let me peek on the other side. All right, so we're through there. You could see it right there. And the trajectory would have it come out right here if it does poke through. Check above. Not poking through. <laughs> Check above. Not poking through. Let's go a little tighter. There we go. And the roof clear. Roof is clear. Not poking through. Yeah. Yeah. I am super. I am super excited about all of this so far. Um, so one thing that we've noticed so far is that when doing a run like this, when you're not building a frame like you traditionally would on the ground, um, if I was to do this again, I would start with the right one here, the left one here, get those nice and level to each other, and then bring the other ones up to that line, because I think that would be simpler. So now that we're doing the, the kitchen wall over here, and we've got this far one done here. I think that we should do this next one uh, here on the passenger side wall first, and then get a two by four, maybe tag it in so that we've got a backdrop to, to go against so that the wall lies straight. That's so, a good idea. yeah, I just thought about that just now, and, um, and it seemed to be just fine the way that we had it, uh, and we just had to make a little adjustments to get everything nice and flush, but they all lined up, so that's really, really good. We're just pumping some uh, construction adhesive in here. And that crack good. Because who doesn't like to cover their behind? We want to make sure those furring strips are going nowhere. Going nowhere. Temporary piece. Temporary. So we can line up all of our vertical pieces. Good idea. That looks pretty straight there. Nice. Looks good. Or I'll be in the kitchen doing this. <laughs> <laughs> of 
Cool. It looks like it's sunk in. <laughs> it's hard to see from that far back, huh? I know. <laughs> I love it. I feel like it's gonna be really spacious. Um, like I have lots of space and Brian and I were even standing in this space at the same time. So there's plenty of room. Nice. So the sink's gonna go here and uh, the toilet's gonna go over here in that corner. And uh, so there's gonna be a wall that's gonna be right around here. You'll see that here in just a second because we've got to actually make that next. It's gonna be a curved wall. So this is gonna be really interesting to watch, I'm sure. Um, and it'll- For all of us. Yeah. So the curved wall will come around here and end approximately right here. And then there will be a curb for the uh, shower entrance right there. Uh, to walk in the shower so this uh i think i think it's gonna be fine like we put the shower in the middle of the bus because i'm tall and like on the shoulders it's just a tight space but that goes with any sort of bus now i do have to say this is a lot taller than most of the vans that I've seen because we used to do research for van life and thinking, oh, let's get like a little a little van to go travel in. Well, in those things, you got to crawl around. Like there's barely any standing room. Great for short people. I'm 6'2". So having this much headspace is great. And considering we're not doing a roof raise, you've probably noticed that already. Um, I don't think a roof raise is really necessary for a schoolie because we want to be able to still go off road and stuff, albeit it's a huge vehicle. So we'll be able to go down some dirt roads, but not like crazy roads, like a little van or something. But I think this is going to be plenty of space for, for me, for the head and uh, for my head space and uh, the shower being in the center, like I'm going to have plenty of room above. We'll have the shower come down and we're going to design it so that we don't have to have a door on the shower at all or a curtain because we're going to have the faucet, uh, like the taps over here. And then over here, we're going to have the shower head coming down uh, so that we can have the shower kind of come into this corner here. So we'll show you more of that as we build that out. But next up, we're going to start cutting the curve out. So we're finding out where the center of the, the arch is gonna be. And uh, we've got about 32 inches across the entire shower pan where the shower pan's gonna be. We might have to cut out a little bit of this floor maybe, uh, but about 32 inches. And so finding the center of that, we're just marking off the wall 16 inches. So there's one mark there. And then coming off this other wall, 16 inches. So we're kind of making a little X here. And we don't have the footprint down for this one yet, but we can surmise that because it's a circle and we've got a pie shape already going on from here, that this is gonna be the dead center of the 32 inches. Even though this is longer than 32 inches, we need a radius so that we can make a smooth uh, curve for this wall. So that is about right there. So now we get to go create a router jig so that we can make this curve. <laughs> Let's go. Let's see it. See if we got any other miniature screws. Oh, those are, are perfect. That's a flathead. That's a flathead. Boom. I think uh, that's probably all we need. So next step, now that we have that, we can take our square edge. Brian is not plugged in right now. Just in case you're wondering. 
Not plugged in. Yeah, always take your machines, take the power off your machines before doing stuff like this. Not just turn on, turn it off either. That's a good idea. So that's the far edge of that particular bit. But I'm trying to find the the square. And there's probably a million different ways to do this. But I just drew a square line on the bottom side. And this is the bit that we're going to use for this maneuver. So call it a maneuver because it's exactly what it is. <laughs> Tools, tips, and maneuvers. And 16 inch. And then we need 17 and a half also, which is right here. So 16, when that's rolling around, is going to cut the inside arc. And then the next one we have to do the outside arc. So the outside arc is going to be measured from this right here, this edge. And that's 17 and a half. And we'll do the same. Theoretically, that should cut an arc <laughs> once you set it down. So now we're ready to make an arc cut. Yay! Let's do it. You want to do one? Try it? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. I think it'll be fun. There's 17 and a half right there. I did have enough room on that side. Yep. Math man. <laughs> no, I did an artful tracing for this one. I don't actually know the <laughs> the angles. This the... is like technical tracing. Uh, technical, technically, it's technical tracing. <laughs> <laughs> So that's 17 and then, or 17 and a half. I did 17 and a half, right? Yeah, 17 and a half and 16's right there. There you go. That's where we screw our screw in right there. All right, so I'm gonna drill a hole that's a hair bigger than the diameter of the screw that we're using so that it just rotates around the screw and doesn't try to unscrew it. So I'm gonna use this here. And then there's our center hole. And this one also did not catch. To help it slide around, I think I may put a washer underneath it. We're doing 17 and a half first. And then we'll put one on the bottom also. That way it just reduces the friction. That's uh takes the wood off wood so that it rotates real nicely. Wood off wood. Wood off wood. Nice. Let me set this here, and then let's reset the jig to the new spot. The machine's unplugged. It might be good that it's an eighth of an inch too big because we have to put straight pieces mm -hmm. on a curve. And this guy's gonna chew out It'll the have material some, too, so yeah. it, we might lose an eighth. Yeah, that's true. Of an inch or like, we might lose a bit. Good job! That's so That's pretty cool, awesome! Huh? It's gonna be a serious curve then. This is perfect because uh, when we go and, and do the framing, let me grab a few of these little pieces. And I'm not sure if we're gonna use two by fours for this or just two by twos. We might use two by twos because they'll make the curve nicer but we'll essentially set these up 
so that when we put the waterproof backer inside this area so that uh, it'll be able to accept tile and stuff. Um, we might do two by twos the majority of the way and every once in a while throw a two by four. Like maybe have a two by four starting it and ending it and then two by twos in between. There it is folks. But yeah, it'll be able to accept two by fours or two by twos without a problem. Uh, and these will go from the floor to the ceiling. So we need to cut one or two more of these, maybe just one more. Cool. Just cut one more and then let's get them clamped and laminated together. Um, so laminate just basically you put wood glue, smooth it out across the surface, then you put several clamps on it to make it one board, which is basically plywood. So we're making thicker plywood essentially. Um, and then that will be the base piece that everything will tag into. Look at that. Yeah, that is <coughs> really freaking cool. So now this actually gives us like the feeling that it'll be inside here. Um, I think this is ample space. This is more space than when I once had an RV, a, like a tow behind uh, travel trailer. This is more space than was in that shower. Like this, the footprint is about two times bigger. It was just, I think it was like 28 by 28 or something. Mm -hmm. And this is now like 30, uh, 32 on the widest part right here. So I think this will be great with the shower head coming this way. We won't need a, the shower curtain or a door or anything because it'll be spraying back into this corner. And then we'll have the drain back in this area probably somewhere right around here or maybe in the middle and have it just evenly slope towards, uh, towards the drain. This is cool. Look at that. Do you want to feel it? Yep. Oh my gosh, that's so much space. That is so big feeling. Cool. Look at it. <laughs> I love it. Do you love it? I love it. I love it. Yeah. Wow, that's going to be cool. I like what it because awesome it's idea. tall enough for me to stand in. Me too. This is so good. I love it. Put these on. So something doesn't jump out at me. Never know. Let's take this off and see how we did. Come see for the big reveal. The big reveal. Ready? Look at that. Look at that double rainbow. Woo. Double rainbow. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. It's like a big smile. Or watermelon. <laughs> so weird. I feel. Oh. All right. Eye pro. I already got my ear pro, and you missed the mark on it. I already put my gear on. Oh, nice. He's just wandering around in an unsafe environment. <clears throat> no protection. So let's go uh, put this in the bus and... You guys want to see what it looks like? Let's go! So the bottom plate here where the studs are attached to, the edge of the curve will line up to the edge of that and then it'll continue to make the curve around. As you see, the middle piece of paper has been cut out because we used that as part of our template to make this curve and basically we measured from the edges as you saw to find our middle. Well, we needed that piece. So we extended our lines out to see where the radius is gonna be. And right here is the line still on the curve of where it needs to line up there. We'll eventually cut off that little piece, that tail right there, because next step, we'll secure this to the floor and then we'll start extending the studs up. So I think those sinks we were looking at were like 14, the one that was like the perfect size was about 14 inches wide. Yeah. Pretty cool. 
Okay, so what I'm trying to figure out right now is how much space we have for a vanity and how much room we have for this wall to come out and how much walking space we need between here and here. So the point, the edge of the shower and the vanity. Um, so we're kind of like playing with how far out we can push this curve and still have walking space in between so we're not like bumping our hips into the side of the vanity or we're not bumping into the edge of the shower we can get out of the shower so we're kind of just check and test this walking space that's pretty good you see my feet okay cool so that's pretty good. And that gives us a super big space for the shower pan, but not much space for the vanity. So we're gonna keep finessing this, but this is kind of how I'd like to do it. Make a piece of paper into the shape that you want and then start kind of adjusting. We've also got part of the toilet on hand, so we can set that over here and start to kind of figure out how that's gonna be. But until we make the sink, we're not gonna frame out the vanity. Um, and we're also looking for kind of a cool piece of wood for that. So let's take another walk in here. Well, now that we got the toilet, <laughs> do you wanna, Sit on that? <laughs> ah. Ah. What do you think? I'm just imagining like mountainous views from right here. Yeah. How much knee space do you have with the circle pushed out? Uh, I can actually like recline here. All right. And let's see if I can get out of the shower and then brush my teeth. So there there i am pooping you can see my <laughs> legs there okay. and then as you walk out of the shower i'm gonna grab my towel all right. well, that'd be a good spot for a towel maybe that might be a good spot for a all towel right. or towel. even to the left of the right sink here maybe right. two hooks grab one there one there towels yeah okay so i'm, While I'm sitting towel. on the toilet i'm gonna towel off in the shower oh nice i'm gonna walk out and i'm gonna grab my toothbrush uh, toothbrush. Is my butt hitting the curve though? I don't think your butt's hitting the curb. I like, I feel but, like I'm kind of close. Like, but you might be standing on the curb right, right there. So because, probably over here. Yeah. Alright. So if you're standing there, what does that look like? So I'm here dropping a deuce while you're brushing your teeth. <laughs> How that's, much floor space? That's we where, see no floor space. Oh, we've got tons of floor space and I'm reclining. <laughs> that's kind of rude. He's pooping while I'm brushing my teeth. Here's uh, the toilet mock-up. Yeah. Basically just a bucket. That's all we're gonna have is just a bucket here. Like, completely unfinished. It's just gonna look just trashy right here. Just no, kidding. No, we're not. It's gonna actually look pretty beautiful. <gasps> You're gonna wanna poop in it. Yeah, when you come over, we invite you to poop in it. Yeah, just throw some sawdust on top afterwards, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Be yeah. courteous to the yeah. next one, all right? All right, let's... Uh, yeah. Let's uh, finesse this some more. Yeah, we're gonna keep finessing it. So now I wanna tape this at a higher spot and kind of see like, like how high we would make it. We strategically over here left enough room in the wall uh, because the, uh, the drain from the sink that's gonna come down right here is gonna go through that wall space over towards where the kitchen's at and the sink in the kitchen and the sink from the bathroom are gonna connect into one pipe that's gonna drop down uh, into the gray water, which will be under the bus in the, in the storage area. And then the drain for the shower, which will be down in this area, will go straight through the floor and then uh, connect into the gray water somehow. Somehow. Haven't got there yet. All right, let's see how this works. Taping it up. Taping it up. We want the vanity to be as big as possible. And we also want to be able to have like a little cubby below it and maybe a cubby above it if there's headroom. There might not be, and I'm okay with that. Um, we could have just like little medicine cabinet 
in here, um, but like a cool little wall cubby would be neat. Mm -hmm. We need an extra spot for a shoe ticket, so those would probably <laughs> go under there just so you have like a nice clean reach from the toilet. Nothing wrong with a clean reach. It's all, <laughs> it's all about ergonomics, folks. See that? Look at that. Still looking vanity. What do you got, Garcia? So, the idea is that, and I, obviously things aren't level in a bus, is that this will be as high as possible. Um, and we'll make another one of these rainbows that'll be perfectly vertical to the one below it so that all of these studs will be the same height. And then we'll have a furring strip that goes between this point all the way across, which will attach that to the roof. Um, and then this one here will have some blocking up here or something uh, to connect that. And then uh, because the wall on the exterior is coming down from the ceiling, on the exterior and from the ceiling on the inside here, it doesn't matter that this is sticking lower because it's gonna be in the wall anyway. So this is kind of the idea of uh, how that will materialize. And so we'll screw this one into the floor first and then we'll cut, uh, cut a two by four um, about the height that it needs to be and then figure out like where this one needs to be situated uh, and line it up with the plumb bob and then secure this up into the ceiling. And I think it'll work just fine. What about this idea? Yeah, what do you got? Take this. Um, if we, what if we took it and had it come down like that? And then the wall starts. The wall stops at this. And it doesn't, the wall doesn't reach the ceiling. Wow, that's, you want to get really that's crafty. math. That's math. I don't know about. Come on, <laughs> you're pretty mathy. We could figure this out. Like if this came down like that and doesn't meet the ceiling, plus it's not gonna be as curved because this part's gonna come off of it. So if this came down like that, we'd still have space for a couple windows. Uh -huh. We're putting windows in this thing, guys. If we we still have space for a couple windows over here, <laughs> what do you think? So if this was about here, Try like the that. water won't spray out of the shower that much, and then we have a little pole here, and you could hang a towel off of there, like just like wrap your towel yeah. around the edge. Um, that would help uh, to let steam escape through the yeah. window. Yeah, and then it wouldn't get trapped in there. We still got room for two or three windows in there. Not opening windows. I mess his life up so hard. <laughs> I make everything hard. I come up with all these psycho ideas. And then... Like I'm over here, I'm like, okay, uh, two by four is easiest to like just screw like this. Now we've got a friggin' mitered, mitered joint here. I'm like, hey, Brian, let's do a curved shower. And he's like, oh. And, and now we've got a, like a corkscrew sort of thing going on. Yeah. Don't tell me you don't think it's cool though. It is cool, but like one of the things that's going to be kind of difficult is lining up the edge here with over here because now this is an ellipse and not a circle. Right. So the 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 waterproofing membrane and or the board that goes along here like might be bent well we'd be able to slice it down at that angle or whatever i guess we just have to make sure that these boards here are vertical and plumb to each other going around the curve mm -hmm. and this curve here would have to be a longer curve so Sounds like it's doable. <laughs> Sounds like it's doable. It's All right. doable. We're gonna talk off camera for a second. <laughs> Help! I do like this. The only issue I have is that What'd you say? You sold me. <laughs> <laughs>
So something I'm noticing with this tool is if I have a really good line of sight, I'm more likely for the blade to be perpendicular to the material I'm cutting so I get a straighter cut. So I always make sure that my eyesight is going straight down the blade so I can follow along the edge of the wood. It's working really good. I love this tool. Um, there's a moment in time where you, you just feel it go thunk, then you're done. And if you're interested in the multi-tool, check out our description below for our shop where we post all of our schooly tools. Just thought I'd make use of the new vanity. <laughs> Should I try this one too? Yeah, yeah put your, your, your jacket there on the new vanity. That might work. All right, we're gonna use a paper vanity. <laughs> Another little tip. If you only move the blade over about half of where you cut the previous cut, so if I go straight down here and then move the blade over about half the width of the blade, um, then I'm always kind of getting that piece of material in between and I don't really have to go back and check for uh, like little stringers or strands holding the wood together in places that I missed. I like this height. What do you think? Yeah. Unless we can like push the, we can push the wood's limits a bit. We could pull it down more, yeah. This is totally cool. How do you feel? I feel like I've got plenty of room here. Like I'm gonna be able to stand up and everything. That's so great. We'll see uh, with the with the floor pan and stuff how tall I am. Right. Because I've got no idea how tall I'll and be. And you've got like inch and a half. Oh yeah. Boots. I won't be wearing work boots in here probably. This is so great. <laughs> Thanks for taking a risk. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. You're not given ideas or gifted ideas if you can't make them happen. If you can think it, you can definitely make it happen. It might take a little more thinking than, you know, something in a box, but if you want it bad enough, you'll make it work. That's so true. Yeah. And I think that the space is gonna work perfectly for taking a nice shower. Like, yeah. I'm tall, so we needed somewhere in the middle, and yeah. uh, we had a nice compromise of where we we're gonna put the shower. Um, we've seen a lot of schoolies put them on the outside wall, and like, the wall dramatically decreases there, and yeah. considering we're not doing a roof raise, this is a perfect spot for us. Like, yeah. it might not be a perfect spot for everybody, mm -hmm. but for us, Perfect. Definitely three three thumbs ups. Heck yeah. Four thumbs ups. At least four. At least four. Both we of have, our thumbs yeah, we have combined. We have four. Four thumbs. Yeah. yeah. Um, some people we've seen uh, put it over in the corner and then put a domer on the roof and kind of like do like a, just a roof raise in one spot. That's pretty cool. Also a cool idea at this point, we have several holes in our roof, so we didn't really need another hole in the roof just for a shower. And um, when you can put it in the center of the bus, why not? And we, yeah. the, with the layout of our kitchen, it ended up working perfectly for the shower. So yeah, yeah. we just have a couple more things um, to do with the framing on this, mm -hmm. um, but that's pretty much it. I do have to say, one of those bubble domes that doesn't open would be pretty cool right here, mm -hmm. having the sky coming through, but it really depends on our roof storage rack. Uh, yep. We don't solar. plan on storing a lot up there, but whenever we get up to work on the solar and stuff, it'll be nice to have a solid platform to walk along. Yeah, yeah. heck yeah. Yeah, um, maybe. I mean, if we put something above this, it should open so that we can have ventilation. Yeah. Hmm. Now we're Some, thinking more dreaming. Something to think about. We'll add that to the list yeah. of dreams.
So for the last part of this project, we're gonna put blocking in right between each one of the studs. Now we're only gonna do one in between. What this is gonna do is it's gonna add rigidity to the wall. It's gonna add some, some sheer... Uh... <laughs> sheer force. <laughs> sheer strength. Sheer strength. It's gonna add sheer strength. It, uh, blocking also, uh, it's, it's something that uh, prevents fire from spreading up in walls. Now this is a little bit different situation. Normally you would have blocking every six feet or something like that, but since these walls are about six feet, six foot two or something like that, we don't really need them. But since we're in a moving vehicle, we decided to put them in so that we can have more stability of the walls that we're building in here because we're gonna be bumping down the road, going on some off-road adventures, and really enjoying the great outdoors. So we want this thing to stay together. having you here your comments your questions all beautiful all welcome until next time friends adventure on adventure on lots of love